Hi, I'm Francis Campoy, and this is Just for Funk. Welcome to episode number 21 of Just for Funk. Today, we're going to continue with what we were doing on the previous episode, which is a quick review of Ursho. Ursho is a URL shortener written by, uh, I thought his name was uh, Douglas Mackey. Uh, apparently, his name is Douglas Mendes. I got to talk to him. He was enjoying the previous part. I hope he will enjoy the second part. If you have not watched the previous episode, do not worry. You can go watch it right now. There's a link on the video description right down here. And if you don't want to watch it, that's also fine because there's actually two pre-independent sections. In the previous one, we reviewed all the part related to HTTP handlers. And in this one, instead, we will concentrate on the storage logic on how we fetch and retrieve data from a database. Does that sound fun? Let's get started. OK, so the first thing I'm going to change in storages is the name. Um, I could also do any handlers. Actually, let's do it in both. I prefer to call it, uh, whoops, no, no, no. I prefer to call the packages in in singular in general. Uh, so this will be the handler package. Uh, so we need to go to main and call this handler.new. And now handler returns a new handler, which actually makes sense because the type it returns is a handler. So all of these make sense. Uh, for storages, I'm going to do the same storage. And that's going to be uh, storages. We have package storages. It's now package storage. And here the same. And let's see where this fails. Here, storage, storages. OK, still not completely happy main.go, ah, uh, main.go, it's still using storages. It's storages, Postgres. OK, the storage package, the most important thing I'd say is the fact that we're going to pass it to this handler. So we have this storage, that IF storage, which is an interface. And this is the most important one. Um, the most important type in the storage package. And actually, I would say this is the only type that should be exported in the storage package other than the model that I will also rename. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename it to service because uh, storage service makes sense. Storage if storage doesn't make that much sense in my opinion. So I'm going to try to rename it with Rename symbol here, uh, it doesn't always work, but let's try it. Let's see, and nope, it didn't work. Okay, so no problem with that. Uh, it's a kind of a complicated thing to do. So I understand that it fails from time to time, but it's sad. So service, and this is gonna be service. Cool. Still compiling. Yay, cool. So we have our base.go and base.go, I'm going to also rename it to be storage.go. This storage.go has a, a service, which is the interface we care about, and then also has this model. The model is kind of a weird name because it is very uh, ambiguous. I prefer to call it item and i know it's not much better but i feel better about it because uh, it's an item that you store model is more about the database uh, which you know it's similar but it's not exactly the same uh, also url uh, is uh, all capitals cool what about the rest postgres.go so my problem with this is that this is an implementation of that interface right it does not need to be in the same package. So instead, I'm going to create a new package that I'm going to call Postgres and move Postgres.go in there. So now we have Postgres here. And what I'm going to do is rather than having in it or in it, I will create a new. So a Postgres.new returns a storage. That service 
And I feel like this is actually pretty, pretty elegant because it allows you to be very clear about how things work. You do not need to expose the Postgres type. You don't need to expose anything else, just new. And the rest is already defined by the storage package, which I find pretty elegant. So uh, basically, new is going to do whatever in it was doing. So let's simply do, well, simply. Let's remove this and this and go from here. So what we're doing is uh, we're getting the user, the password, and the database name from the options. Rather than passing the options, uh, so then our Postgres package is tied to the op to the config package. I prefer to do uh, to pass the strings. So user, password, and database name are strings, and we're going to use them directly here. Okay, and this is, let's call it connect. And of course this might fail, so we need to return also an error. New returns uh, uh, Postgres backed storage service. Why not? Uh, there's a little bit of a warning here because it says, "Hey, you're not you, you you have an underscore there, but you don't say why." Uh, this is this loads the Postgres uh, drivers, which is something that we need. So it's good that we have it, but we need to document it. Okay, so if this fails, we return nil and an error, nil and an error, nil and an error. And otherwise, we're going to return uh, Postgres with db equals db and nil. Okay, db equals db. There you go. Uh, we rename this to be storage dot item. Uh, storage dot I'm pretty sure we renamed it. Yeah, storage.item. Why is this not happy with this? Uh, undefined storage.item. Oh, because it's, oh, it's getting the wrong storage. Uh, okay, go import is a little bit confused right now. That's okay. What I'm going to do is uh, do the import myself. Storage, that storage there is the one I want. Uh, that should be a pointer. Okay, so now this Postgres type satisfies the storage uh, the storage cell service interface, and that's cool. But I do not even want to expose this type actually. So instead, I'm going to rename it as something lowercase and define all of the methods on lowercase Postgres. Um, all of the models should be storage.item and let's see let's see storage.item ouch okay that was sometimes I went a little bit overboard I go a little bit overboard with um, with the uh, multi curses. Oh, this should be called item. This should be called DB. So this should be item, 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 DB. The code ID, uh, URL, DB, item, item. Item, item, and item, and db, and item, and db, and something is wrong, in, and URL. Okay, complicated. So now the code compiles again, almost. 
Cool, it compiles again. Nice. Uh, now this is this is better, but still oh, it doesn't compile. Uh, it is better, but still not what I want to do. Uh, there's a couple of problems. The first one is what is this item doing here, right? Uh, why do we need an item in the storage? Uh, the way we're using it is as a way to scan stuff, uh, but that is a really bad idea because if we have two different items to be being loaded. At the same time, then one will uh, override the other. We have data races and stuff like that. So do not do that. That's a bad idea. Instead, we're gonna do we're gonna define the item here. Uh, use that item that we did we we created in the function, and then simply return it. Same goes here. So we also need an item there. And then now we can get rid of this item, which is nice because it makes my type even a little bit smaller. And the code also makes ends up being a little bit tighter, which is nice. Cool. Uh, what else? Let's see. Uh, so save what it does. It creates an ID. We're going to call this simply ID. It is used here. So what it's doing is creating insert into whatever. And oh, so what we want to do is this will return the the ID of the next item. So we want to keep it somewhere. We want to return it later. So we are passing all of this, and we are printing it. I think that's not important. Then we're encoding it. Uh, we'll see what encode does really uh, later, but it's not really that important. It's not that interesting, actually. Uh, what about this load? So load, it creates the uh, storage. It, it does the select statement. It scans it into that. I think this is better if it's written like this. I prefer it more like this. Uh, this could be called simply ID. And then it creates, for some reason, rather than an, uh, just call update, in this case, it prepares the, the, the statement. Preparing a statement is helpful when you're going to be executing that pretty often. It's basically like pre-compiling it. But we have not done it in any other case. So I'm not going to do it in this case either. Um, or you could do it everywhere. But I'm just not going to do it anywhere. So I'm simply going to do p.db.exec of this command with these parameters and that's going to return a result and an error and so if the error is the nil we're going to return that otherwise we're going to return the item and nil uh, not happy none of variables yeah that's why P item, oh yeah, so item.count. Cool, so update. These example, these comments are not really that useful. They're pretty obvious, so that's why I'm removing them. Finally, load info. Load info, what it does here and what it does here is exactly the same. So what I'm going to do instead is simply so this is exactly the same as we're doing there. So this will call p dot load of code. Sorry, p load load info. Return an item and an error, and then from there we'll do this part and return item. Because this, yeah, is basically the same. Oh, uh, if error is the nil, return nil and an error. And one more, close. Uh, and close, I'd say that this should return an error. Um, because we can. And it's good to return errors. Because otherwise you're failing silently, which is not good. Okay. Oh, so now it does not match the interface. Because this should have an error here. Cool. So 
Does still this compile? No, it doesn't compile anymore. I broke this here because this URL. Um, this handler, this redirect, this 301, I'm not sure about that. Uh, status redirect permanent and status redirect temporary. This is 308. This is 307. We're using 301. Not sure what that one is. 301 is status move permanently. Sure, we can use that one, but let's name it status move permanently. I think it's a little bit more clear than just 301. Okay, uh, are you compiling now? No, it does not compile yet. Uh, why? Oh, because what we're doing is still wrong. So in the main package now, how do we use uh, Postgres? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply do postgres.new and I need to pass the user, the password. So config. Um, so we need to move this below the config. So config dot postgres dot user config dot postgres dot password and config dot postgres dot db that will return a service and an error if the error is not nil we can do log fatal of that otherwise so we don't need to do that in it there anymore services the close at the end and pass the search cool um so i'm pretty happy with the main package now i gotta say this looks pretty good the storage package is very simple the postgres package only exposes one single thing which is new which is very nice i really like that so if i go here to uh storage postgres and then go talk you will see that there's only new that's it that's everything you can do that's very nice uh in storage there's only item and service, which is also pretty nice. And then handlers go doc only has, again, one single function called new, and that's everything we expose. I find that really cool. And config has a uh, type config and from file. Cool. Uh, there is one more thing that I would change which is the fact that there is this encoding, base 62 and the coding side is far from being perfect, I'm going to say, but I feel like this video is long enough. I invite you to go read the code and see how would you change it and send it my way. Let me know how, would you, how you would change this code to be um, easier to read, maybe more efficient, let me know. With that, we reached the end of episode number 21. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little bit shorter than the previous one, kind of compensating really, because the previous one was really long. I'm going to keep on trying to make episodes around 20 to 30 minutes, which I always fail at because there's so many things to say. But anyway, need to be better than that. Let me know what you think. Send me your comments directly here on YouTube, or you can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Francesc. You can also use the hashtag JustLeFunk, and I will probably notice. And finally, you can also send me, uh, you can send me your ideas and proposals and feedback to form.justforfunk.com. That's what Douglas Mendes did with this piece of code, and that's how I got to review it. So again, thanks, Douglas, for sharing your code. I hope you enjoyed it and think about the fact that, yes, it's a little bit harsh to have your code reviewed and to break it into pieces like this, but at the same time, you're helping the rest of the community to understand how to write better code. So again, Douglas, thank you so much. Thank you all for watching and see you all in two weeks.